Reading for June 4th, Science of Mind, A Philosophy of Faith, A Way of Life by Ernest Holmes. Reading from page 219, paragraph 2, through page 221, paragraph 1, using inclusive language. Do not try to go beyond your understanding. Since our spiritual understanding is not sufficient to enable us to mentally set bones, we call in a surgeon. Since we cannot walk on water, we take a boat. We go only as far as our spiritual knowledge takes us. Principle is infinite, but we shall demonstrate its power only at the level of our concept of it. Every day we have the announcement from scientists that they have made new discoveries, laws which have always existed, but which have not as yet been utilized. Do not let anyone discourage or belittle your efforts by asking, why don't you walk on water? Jesus did. Do not be sidetracked by any of these futile suggestions, these mental obstructions, which an unbeliever would seek to throw in your path. If we had the understanding which Jesus had, we would be able to walk on water. I am not at all confused by the fact that we do not do this today. Some day someone will come along who knows how to walk on or over water. We are probably on the verge of a great spiritual awakening. People are so tired of looking for things where they do not exist that they are going to more and more completely open their thought to the realization that spirit is an active presence. But if we spend our time trying to find out why it does not work, we shall never find out how and why it does work. Arguing is often a waste of time. Somehow there must come to each individual an interior conviction that we are one with the universe and that the spirit flows through us at the level of our recognition and embodiment of it. For this is the way, the truth, and the life. People say, I can't take off my glasses then wear them, but begin to make the declaration that there is one perfect vision seeing through you. This is the truth. If this statement becomes a subjective realization, you will be healed, will no longer need glasses. If a plaster will relieve, use it. If a pill does any good, take it, but gradually try to lead the thought from where it is into the higher realms of consciousness where the soul recognizes its own I amness. Suppose one is unable to convince themselves of the truth of the statement which they make. How are they going to bring themselves to a place of belief? By repeating their affirmation, dwelling on its meaning, meditating upon the spiritual significance of it, until the subjective state of their thinking becomes clarified. This is the only reason for repeating treatments, for one treatment would heal if there were no subjective doubts. Repeated treatments induce, within consciousness, a definite concept of an already established truth, even though the fact may not as yet have become objectified. This is why mental healing is scientific, there is no room for doubt in a treatment. Realize that you treat with your understanding. By your own choice, you decide to give a treatment. But the treatment becomes operative through the law. Never say, I am not good enough to treat. In God, there are no good, better, or best. Do not allow yourself to become superstitious. For you are dealing with a normal, natural law in the mental and spiritual world. This law is just as real as any other known law. Never say, I am not sure that I have enough power to treat. You can never heal with this mental attitude, for it implies that you think you are doing the healing. Rather say, as I let fall the forms of my thought, they are operated upon by principles in which I believe. This is the law of God, the law of personhood, and the law of the universe. 
Never say or think, this disease is hard to heal. While that presented yesterday was easy. If you find yourself saying this, at once heal yourself. Such a belief comes from the thought that we are dealing with a limited power and that such power knows degrees of discomfort. The truth is that there is but one power and that power knows only perfection.